I just did some quick math in my head based on the numbers. Um, I think for the AM, I think the AMM bot will end up, for, based on the mechanics you described, will end up minting about three trillion pulse. That's right. For liquidity pools. Which is now that's fun. that's with his number. A lot. I think it's one percent, and so it should be like. 1.3 trillion but it's still a lot because if you would tie a ten thousandth of a dollar price point to that you're like oh there's this much liquidity in pulse already like how many millions of dollars do we need to push this up and mm. so then again you could also say well now you have two different coins you have pulse which might pump kind of slow but on high liquidity where people can cash out without yeah. much slippage it's good for the have airdrop pulse people well yeah and then you have then you have pulse X, which will might pump harder, but then it's like, okay, maybe you no, can't cash out. It, exactly, you can't cash out 10 mil, 100 mil without a freaking hey, average dump. But what does Richard yeah. always say? Volatility is the price you pay for the best performing asset. So I'm down with volatility. I can ride it out. I can wait. I don't care if yeah. it goes down 95%. If it pumps 10 times or 100 times harder than other things, whenever it does yeah. run up, you know, like that's why we love Hex so much. Even if it drops 95%, we still wrecked Bitcoin. We still wrecked Ethereum, like in performance-wise. So I'm, true, true. I'm okay with volatility. I like, like it's not like I want something with only a thousand dollars of liquidity. I want maybe a few millions or something. I think a, and there's, people are gonna have so much access to their right. coins like right at the start. I think people who don't know what they're doing are gonna like provide liquidity and get wrecked <laughs> because. Yeah. Yeah. Providing liquidity like at the start is like sure oh, there might be a lot no, of volume, no, 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 but no, no, you no, might no. get left behind on the wrong coins. Market makers, liquidity providers do best in the sideways market. Yeah. Right? Not, not when things are exploding left and right. You're like, oh, exactly. where exactly. do I go? Where do I but, yeah, you don't wanna and most people won't be liquidity farming properly, is my guess. Um <laughs> I just like yeah. Pulse X because you can uh, just stake it not risk it at all and then earn other things while like, the price gets bought up by the exchange <laughs> being used and yeah. another thing you know all this stuff with hedron icosa what's uh and how it's it's they say there's like this it should be able to get up to this b share value or something and there's like arbitrage well arbitrage sounds to me like volume so as long as, unless there's, unless they somehow do it through other contracts that don't go through PulseX or something to get the arbitrage uh, opportunities, that should just be more volume for PulseX DEX, which just buys more PulseX all the time. So if you build more things that create extra buy pressure on PulseX, I am down with that, you know? Yeah, that's why I'm more bullish on PulseX than Pulse, just liquidity wise. Maybe they figure out something that makes it not have to mint so much extra Pulse. But the thing is, like, if we want to have the world's largest airdrop, you have to have the people who get the free PRC20s to get some value out of them. And so they can exit through sure. Pulse. And they basically, sure. it's, I think of it as a, is the way I was able to spin it in a good light, is this is the, at launch, there will be the second Pulse chain sack phase where if you, you can actually buy some of the Pulse that's available from that newly minted supply. So... Interesting. But that's only like, like we said, like 1% or technically it's like 10% of the user on supply. Roughly, yeah. And so they that. get access to possibly getting some of that. And sure, they can exit and oh, sell. Well, right, though. They can sell and leave immediately and hurt the pulse price for a bit. But once those free claimer people are gone, uh, or if they're, pure, like, because only one person, like one whale in each one of these ecosystems can basically dump and get like... I don't know. Even like the whole shib thing, I looked it up. Like if the if a big whale in a shib gets, you know, a pulse chain airdrop and they 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 sell everything they had like 100 I don't know how much there are trillions or something doge or a shib, I mean. They only get like 50k US dollars worth like of okay. of pulse chain sack at the base price or whatever of 10,000 huh. to 1. And so it's like huh. that's like a decent airdrop for a big whale, 50k, you know. But yeah. like they it might get their attention to be like, maybe there's something more to this. You know, maybe I'll become a whale over here. You know, mm -hmm. maybe I'll buy up some of these coins instead of sell. So I think it's attractive to larger players because they see how much value is like Richard's creating over there. 
and like kind of giving it kind of hurts the sacrificers in my opinion a little bit because they're kind of giving away some pulse for free but at what rate though at what rate is it really free well yeah if you get if you have 10 million dollars worth of shib mm -hmm. erc20 and then pulse chain launches there's a shib pulse pool and you just have a copy and you just go and then you can get out if you wanted. You could yeah, so they didn't pay anything, mm -hmm. right? And so uh, dump shit to pulse, dump pulse to uh to what? To like stable, like get out? Yeah, like if they wanted to get to USDC or whatever. Um but yeah, if they just well, then, they're only hurting the ratio yeah. at first whenever they trade yeah. it for pulse, they're only hurting the ratio towards shib or whatever but then when they sell the pulse for something else like yeah, and leave the system the that's price. when it's bad that's why it's really bad whenever like ethereum foundation and vitalik sell the top on ethereum and remove 50 yeah. million dollars from like the ecosystem because it's reflexive as soon as a huge actual chunk of money leaves the system it's like oh now there's less for us and the price is going down and so it just kind of hurts the whole ecosystem when people remove to cash or at least stable coins i guess the ratio at least there will be um a lot of liquidity for yeah, that that's right to your point there earlier like there's enough liquidity to absorb the dump. calculations hundreds of millions there you go so people will be able to dump and not hurt the price too bad i hope 